Binge Pipe loves our users so much, we gave you this menu screen. Some people said Binge Pipe was crazy for launching a streaming service inside a party pack of five games and offering no way to actually monetize it. And we're taking that under advisement. Binge Pipe, we're open to constructive criticism. Gamer. I'm that guy at work who won't stop quoting Caddyshack. I'm Mark Twain, and this is Jurassic Park. We are Binge Pipe! The following Binge Pipe content is sponsored by Mystaxis, the number one over-the-counter medication that prevents nosebleeds caused by telekinesis. If you want peace of mind while moving pieces with your mind, then Mystaxis is right for you. Hey, this is the Ritter family. We're unable to answer the phone right now, so leave your message after the beep, and we'll try to get back to you as soon as we can. Also, it's come to our attention that someone has been taking our outgoing voicemail messages and putting them online for other people to listen to. I don't really understand it, but apparently they've gotten quite a following. Who would want to listen to that? My neighbor told me there was a think piece about it in the New Yorker. Anyway, please don't do that. We're just a normal family that values our privacy. Thank you. Oh, also, our daughter Linda called off her engagement to Brad Corey. Apparently they had a big f Binge Pipe regrettably informs you that we've brought back You Don't Know Jack. Binge Pipe, here's where a joke goes. Welcome to the game. I'm your host, Cookie, and if you mute me, I will find out about it. Remember, if any of you are undercover cops, you have to tell me now. Okay, let's get this show on the road. Time for question one. To begin with, attempt to squirm. I think it might have a temperature, but all I have is this axillary thermometer. Where should I put it? Up my butt, in my ear, in my nose, or under my armpit? And how do we do? Look, I'm as surprised as you this isn't the right answer. Axillary thermometers go under your armpit. But when I'm not using it, I, I do keep it in my butt. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This one's called Whether You Like It or Not. What's a condescending way to describe condensation? Everybody knows water becomes ice. Water becomes steam, if that's what you're into. Ice becomes water, but you haven't become anything. Or so what if steam becomes water? You want a parade?
So who got it? You're gonna laugh. Okay, when water vapor cools down, it turns from steam to a liquid, and this process is called condensation. In the water cycle, condensation occurs in clouds. What? No, oh, I shouldn't talk about clouds. They're way over your head. Why don't we do it with three? Why not try Avenue Q and A? And it's a dis or dat. I'm going to read off seven things, and for each one, I want you to tell me if it's a song from the musical Avenue Q or a tweet from celebrity Gary Busey. Answer quick. You'll only have a few seconds to choose between Avenue Q or Gary Busey. And you're all doing this together, so pay attention. Here it comes. I'm not wearing underwear today. someone and they'll shut up. Not every F word is the F word. The internet is for porn. Racist. I just made spaghetti for the first time. Things are in season for a reason. Y'all kind of stunk up the place, but you all, you just plain sucked at that dis or dat. Dissatisfaction has been noted. Looks like it's screw time. <laughs> That's correct, binge pipe employee Cookie Masterson. Use the screw to make answering a question harder for all the other players. The results may surprise you, and you'll receive a bonus for each player who chooses incorrectly. Yeah, okay, they get it. Use them wisely. Or don't. You do you. I don't need you anymore. Let's try in development. What was Kumail Nanjiani's first role? An embryo, a zygote, a fetus, or a phalanx? this player five just dropped a screw on you guys i think it's time for some reflection let's see who got it the zygote is formed as soon as a sperm fertilizes an egg and it's the earliest role kumail as well as all humans held on this list to be fair, it was a pretty small role, but he did beat out millions of applicants for the part. Nicely screwed, Player 5. Enjoy your cash. Try this on for size. I say a little prayer for you. Okay, just go with me on this one. If you were the well-meaning parent of a gothic cathedral, what would they most likely yell at you? Oh, I can't stanchion you. I don't give a flying buttress. Get out of my modest parlor or F your domes. Oh, look out. Layer three just let loose a screw. Please enjoy the large print edition of this question. I love this part. Well, too late now. Gothic architecture is characterized by rib vaults and flying buttresses, which help support cavernous spaces with high ceilings like the Notre Dame Cathedral. 
And you really shouldn't let a cathedral talk to you that way. Nice use of the screw, Player 3. Here's your extra cash. <laughs> Round 1 is history. Let's see who's cheating. Currently, Player 1 is in the lead. And down here, these players are doing the bad thing. When the going gets tough, the tough gets more screws. Round two screws are more powerful, and they'll net you more cash for each player that gets the question wrong. So don't be shy about using them. The rest of you better answer fast before you get screwed. Oh, and by the way, all the cash in round two is doubled. In case you care about things like that. You can take that to the bank. <laughs> Six trombones is not a parade. Next, from here to maternity. What might you have heard in the delivery room as Zeus gave birth to the goddess Athena? Breathe deep, then push out of your chest. Relax, then one big push out of your belly button. You got this. Just push out of your forehead. Or, whoa, is this going to happen out of your nose? What'd you guys pick? Honest mistake. <laughs> Athena was birthed from Zeus's forehead as a fully grown adult. And if the birth happened from way up in the forehead, I can only imagine the size of that episiotomy. <laughs> Coming up next, my inner truth. So I've had a moment to reflect, and there's something I have to confess, and I think I should do it before we go on any further. I didn't really get that episiotomy joke at the end of the last question. Um, what's an episiotomy? An incision of the trachea, an incision of the sacrum, an incision of the perineum, or an incision of the lymph nodes? I'm pretty sure it's one of those things. Okay, let's take a look. I'm pretty sure... no. Hmm, no, no. Oh, okay, an episiotomy is a surgical incision of the perineum. Got it. Got it, got it, got it, all cleared up. Totally understand now. Thanks. Twas then I learned to heed the wings of it. Next up. I've seen a lot of things. So, imagine professional wrestler John Cena had the ability to see into the future, but only while eating cookies. Hold on. Sorry. I, I can't believe I have to do this again. <sighs> What's a perineum? I refuse to sully this game with an answer. I refuse to taint this game with an answer. I refuse to tarnish this game with an answer. Or I refuse to blemish this game with an answer. Look sharp. Player three decided to screw. You guys remember your password, right? Hope you like what you picked. Oh, okay, okay, yep, yeah, taint, got it. Hmm. Poor Zeus. Nicely done with that screw, Player 3. Have some cash. Here we have... Sportswear that shows off your religious figure. And uh-oh, Dress Up Kit's Dime Store. It's time for a... Think fast on this one. The longer you take, the less cash you make. Okay, focus up. Okay, look at the gibberish phrase and tell me what movie title it rhymes with. Gymnastic priests planned their new lined hem. And don't let that punctuation fool you. Magic is everywhere. If you're looking in the right place. Amazing animals with a map to their 
location. Okay, pencils down. <laughs> Let's make sense of this, shall we? Okay, let's move along. Take a good look at WWEIEIO. Kids love professional wrestling about as much as professional wrestlers love doing things other than professional wrestling. Based on his well-known catchphrase taunt, what would most likely be John Cena's favorite childhood game? Duck Duck Goose? Peekaboo? Well, what do you know? Player 5 has invoked the screw. This one goes out to my lawyer. I love you, Kurt. Who picked what? Nope, that wasn't it. John Cena is well known for saying, You can't see me, which is also the name of his first studio album. I know that because I bought a Cena album thinking it was a Sia album, and I gotta say, I have zero regrets. Excellent screwing, Player 5. I believe this belongs to you. Welcome to the attack. When you see an answer that matches the category, tap it on your device. The faster you pick a right answer, the more cash you make. And more than one answer can be right. But each time you're wrong, I'm taking some cash away. And be careful. We may miss you. It's gotta be a match that fits this clue. Centenarians only. I hope you can guess which things are over a hundred years old. Good luck. Player 2 takes it! 
Nice work, Player 2. You won the game. Put on your party pants and celebrate. Unless you're already wearing them. A little presumptuous, but hey, do what you want. You don't know Jack! I'm Blake And I'm Chad And we're the Internet Brothers Watch us pull some sick stunts I went to a grocery store Dressed like a dinosaur And figure out how to monetize Our growing Instagram following What are the tax implications? That's Blake and Chad the Internet, Internet Brothers. Brothers! We bought a dinosaur costume. So everyone has disappeared? More like half the population? Of Earth? That we know of, yes. But everything is different now because we're we're in space? Unclear. Uh, is this a flashback? Also unclear. Uh, but we definitely have to defuse this bomb, right? That part seems obvious. I mean, I'm just making sure we're on the same page here. This fall on the exposition. And, wait, are we related? Unclear. Damn it. with another refreshing trip down memory lane with You Don't Know Jack Oldies Radio. Check out these classic Jack commercials to take a break from today's fast-paced world of lab-grown meat and hoverboards that don't really hover. Listen to these commercials from a simpler time. Hello. I'm Ira Blab. This is the You Don't Know Jack Pledge Drive. Uh, you know, many people don't know how expensive it is to run a trivia game. It, it seems like all you'd need would be a sort of a desk encyclopedia and a few hundred Bazooka Joe comics, you know. Um, friends, that is not so. If you've just finished a game or are about to play a game, how much money did you win? something thousands of dollars right we give away thousands of dollars every single game and sad to say most people who end games owing us money simply never pay thousands of dollars on every single game of you don't know jack and how can we afford to do this well i mean we can't that's why we need you to help us out so call 1-800-555-9355, that's 555-YDKJ, or if you're on a cell phone, you can throw it in the street, and call, just call, okay? Just please call. Bowling! Why ruin such a primal sport by gingerly putting your fingers through the ball like a dainty little schoolgirl? Introducing Fistful Bowling Equipment for the dude who takes on the world knuckles first. We customize all of our balls, bags, and shoes so they fit your fist perfectly, and you can get right down to the business of punching out a game. Wow, nice frame, mister. Out of my way. Wow. Fistful Bowling Equipment Incorporated. When life gives you a 7-10 split, punch it hard. One ticket to bloody, bloody murder, please. Wait a minute. How old are you? Seventeen. I don't believe you. You look six. Aw, oh, man, shucks. Hey, kid, if you want to seem older and get into R-rated movies, you gotta smell older. Here, try a bottle of Old Man Essence. Hey, neat. One ticket to bloody, bloody murder, please. You have the mature smell of mothballs and elderly B.O. Sorry about before. Thanks! It's thanks, old man! Remember, kids, buy old man essence so you too can smell old enough to live! Thanks for joining me for another cruise down memory lane on You Don't Know Jack Oldies Radio. This is Schmitty saying, see you last time. <laughs> uh. You Don't Know Jack Oldies Radio!
Enjoy this exclusive behind the scenes content from You Don't Know Jack. Of the animated <clears throat> of the animated sadistic duo Itchy and Scratchy. <clears throat> it's great. Itchy and Scratchy question. Perfect. On account of the ball having faces painted on them back then, because then there were so many severed heads on the ground, you didn't know if it was a ball or a face. So, or a head. <laughs> Or a head. Get it? Although as you get older, all that poisoning... <laughs> Although as you get older, all that poisoning, stabbing, drowning, and... <laughs> Although as you get older, all that poisoning, stabbing, drowning, and bullets to the... <laughs> Although as you get older, all that poisoning, stabbing, drowning, and bullets to the head and body <laughs> it starts to catch up with you. <laughs> ah, so true. Thank you for joining us for this binge pipe bonus content. This is Nate Shapiro, the host of Truth Talk 23-7, the last voice of reason in a world that no longer exists. Truth Talk 23-7. Truth Talk. I've been doing some digging into Binge Pipe and what it's really about, and yeah, 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 I know this show is on Binge Pipe, but maybe that's just part of their plan. Truth Talk 23-7. Truth Talk. I did an extensive internet search about Binge Pipe and came up with nothing. Nothing. How can a major media streaming service have almost no web presence? It would have to be either completely inept and destined for failure or a super genius conspiracy capable of erasing all evidence of its own existence. Think about that. Think about that for a minute. We're going to take a quick break to sell some Truth Talk tank tops. But after the break, someone brought to my attention an ancient Sumerian scroll with multiple mentions of what I have been told clearly translates to binge pipe, the consumer of worlds. It's all there in clear Sumerian. Truth Talk 23-7. Truth Talk. Enjoy this exclusive behind-the-scenes content from You Don't Know Jack. Hey everyone, I'm Beatrice Risbet and I'm question number eight's agent. My client is happy to be a part of this newest version of You Don't Know Jack. When I first signed on to represent number eight, I could tell they weren't getting the attention they warranted. They don't have a history of phoning it in like question six. I won't lie, negotiations got tough. For a minute they were thinking about recasting, and then the game would have gone question seven, then Don Cheadle, then question nine. But luckily, we reached a deal and 8 will continue to be part of the series while also continuing its work in the Fibonacci series. Thank you for joining us for this Binge Pipe bonus content. This is Nate Shapiro, and today on Truth Talk 23-7, we're taking calls and getting to the bottom of the truth, which is where the most important truth hides. The bottom part. Truth Talk 23-7. Truth Talk. First caller, you're live on the air. Are you a sheep or are you a weasel? What? I, uh, those both sound bad. Total sheep. Next caller. Are you a sheep or are you a pair of cargo shorts? Oh, I... I was going to say weasel, but is that not an option anymore? Uh-oh, we got a fragile pair of cargo shorts on the line. Next caller. Truth Talk. <laughs> It's like 
like pizza, but for women. Jessica, I know I'm from the future, but I love you. Johnson, step into my office now. You smell that? Step out and then back in. Right? Or is it just me? Hey, I'm Nolan. Follow me as I travel the world with only a backpack, a plan, and a credit card that never runs out of money. The Trust Fund Traveler. New episodes premiere during your work shift. It's your old pal Schmitty on Binge Pipes You Don't Know Jack Oldies Radio. Our request lines are open, so if you've got a classic You Don't Know Jack commercial you'd like to hear, just send us a request in the mail and we should get it. Eventually, things take a while to get to the right place around here. Anyway, here's a classic talk block of your favorite old You Don't Know Jack commercials. There's been a lot of talk lately about some of the troubles America's been facing over the last decade. But we at the America 12th Party still think that America is the 12th greatest country in the world and always will be. And if you think it's somehow less, like 17th or 21st, well, you're dead wrong. Dead wrong. And you can just get out and move to Sierra Leone or Zimbabwe. Then you'll see, you'll see that we're the luckiest, best people in the world, except for, you know, Norwegians and Australians. But besides them and Canadians and New Zealand, we're the most blessed people besides the Swedish and a couple other countries. But we're doing a lot better than Vietnam for now. We're number 12. We're number 12. Are you an audio engineer, animator, or just a sound effects enthusiast who wishes they had more boner sound effects in their collection? Well, you're in luck with the new Thousand Sounds Boner Collection. We've got the chubby, the little prick, the chode, the crazy ejaculator. The boner entering bullet time. The boner that takes a few seconds to struggle out of pants. The my first boner. The musical boner. The just can't get it started boner. The whipped out in public. The Rube Goldberg. The fish boner. The robot boner. The human boner that for some reason sounds like a bunch of kittens boner. And the Kevin. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Order the boner collection today and we'll throw in the giant cartoon booby collection for free. Playing solitaire on the computer is fun, right? But it's hard to remember all those rules. Now there's a computer card game that gets back to the basics. 52 Card Pickup 2000. That's right. 52 Card Pickup 2000 does all the work by throwing the virtual deck all over the virtual room. Whoa! There are cards all over the place. You know what to do next. Here's the four of clubs under this couch. I'm going to pick it up. Wow, there's three or four under this table. I'm going to pick them up. You can play by yourself or set up exciting tournament play. With your web browser, you can even play other people across the Internet. It's simple. It's repetitive. It's 52 Card Pickup 2000. You'll wonder why you ever owned a real deck of cards. That's it for this session of You Don't Know Jack Oldies Radio. I'm Schmitty, and I'll always be with you in your memories. My God, that's a terrifying thought. You don't know Jack Oldies Radio. Streaming now on an all-new Lion Punch. I am the Lion Punch. A troubling revelation. Master of the demon ways. Protector of the five shards of the crow Korga. Binge Pipe is ignoring our lawyers and presenting You Don't Know Jack. Binge Pipe. Woke programming. Straight up evil business practices. 
Cookie Masterson here. What's black and white and red all over? Please tell me it's getting closer and I'm not wearing my glasses. I can just tell from your names that each of you is delightful company on a promenade. Okay, this is real now. Time for question one. To get things rolling, that puma just ate Tyra. Imagine an unfortunate typo leads NBC to produce America's Got Talons, where celebrity judges fight off a series of clawed animals. Which scenario would we never see? Seal fending off a seal, Howie Mandel besieged by parrots, Simon Cowell punching an orangutan, or Heidi Klum headbutting a koala. Okay, what'd you pick? <laughs> <laughs> the better choice would have been Orangutans have adorable fingers, but no claws. So you will never see Simon punching one of them. But I have to admit, it's really easy to picture. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Here's one I like to call Ready Player Onesie. <sighs> this is embarrassing. I lost a fight to a baby, but the baby had an unfair advantage. I'm an average adult, so that baby's skin is thicker than mine. That baby can see twice as far as me. That baby's muscles are denser than mine. Or that baby's got more bones than me. Let's see how that shook out. Keep your chin up. <laughs> Look, nobody knew it, so let's skip the formalities. The average adult has 206 bones. The average baby starts with 300 bones that eventually fuse together. So, the baby won the fight, but at least I didn't crap my pants. Until later when I got home. Why do we do it with three? There is no hiding from... Oh, yes. And oh, yes. It's a dis or dat. I'm going to list off seven titles, and for each one, I want you to tell me if it's a best-selling self-help book or an album by the prog rock band Yes. Don't think too hard. I'm only giving you a few seconds to decide between a book or a Yes album. And you're all doing this together, so look alive. Ready? Good. Getting to Yes. Yes. Essentially, yes. Year of yes. Yes. Introducing Yes. The best Yes. It took real teamwork to be this bad. Now let's keep going. I don't need you oh, here's a good one. Color wheel. Which unlikely cartoon couple would combine to form complementary colors? Pikachu and Big Bird, Shrek and Sonic the Hedgehog, a Minion and the Pillsbury Doughboy, or Cookie Monster and Chester Cheetah? Mm -hmm. 
So what'd you pick? Well, I have definitely written some fan fiction about this. <laughs> Complementary colors are opposite on the color wheel. For instance, blue and orange. They could also bond over their unhealthy eating habits. This one's known as going out on a big laugh. Which of these punchlines applies to the latest Shakespeare comedy? That's no male servant, that's my sister. That's no donkey, that's my boyfriend. That's no statue, that's my wife. Or that's no... Okay, that is a wizard, but it's also my father. Okay, who chose what? Alas... The Tempest, featuring the wizard Prospero and his daughter Miranda, was one of the last plays written by the Bard. I'm hoping my last joke will be equally as good at wording funny. Round one is over. Let's see who deserves my love. Currently, player one is in the lead. And on the other end of the spectrum, these players are making everyone feel bad. We have some more screws to help our targeted numbers. And don't forget, round two screws have crazier effects. Plus, they earn you a bigger bonus for each player that gets the question wrong. So don't forget to use them. The rest of you better answer fast if you don't want to be screwed. Oh, and uh, remember, questions are worth twice as much in round two. You're doing so well, Cookie. <laughs> It's time for... This question ain't nothing to F with. If the Wu-Tang Clan had named themselves after things invented during the Tang Dynasty, who would not be a member? Old Dirty Porcelain, Ghostface Gunpowder, Inspecta Hourglass, or Woodblock Printing Meth... Well, well. Player 4 just used that screw. Embrace the change. Or don't. Let's see who got it. I'm sure you meant well. <laughs> there are no records of the hourglass existing before a French monk made one in the 8th century. Old Dirty Porcelain is known for his outrageously profane lyrics about his hummels. Oh, excellent screwing player four. Here's that cash. Oh, and I see we have some name changes. I'll, um, send this along to the DMV. Las Bears should mock the more. Set. Behold. Calculating some hourglass figures. That last question got me thinking about sand timers. You know those little plastic hourglasses that come with some board games? Boggle, Taboo, Apples to Apples, Clue, and Jenga. How many of these games are traditionally sold with any kind of timer? Oh, and uh, include Settlers of Catan and Scattergories in your tally. Three, four, five, or six. Love this part. Boggle and Taboo usually come with little sand timers. Scattergories too, although that game eventually added a mechanical timer, which still counts. It still counts because it's it's a timer. It counts down time. No? Okay. Hey, question. We'd like to give you the illusion of control. Would you like a delicate question about musicals or a musical question about delicates? Contribute your percentage of the choice now. Here are the votes. We graciously accept your choice. Twas then I learned to heed the winds of it. 
up next. A musical question about delicates. Here comes a question. Make way for the question. Oh, yes, a question is a coming. It's a rolling down the track. Choo choo, choo choo. Are you ready? Ready for the question? Ready for a question. Then I must be the one to simply ask. What did the underwear company Playtex help make? The first wetsuit, the first spacesuit, the first bikini, or the first graduation cap and gown? So watch out. Uh, player three used that screw. Say, can you answer a moving target? Okay, let's take a look. Playtex designed the spacesuit worn on the first Apollo mission. Ready for a question? No, ladies, that, that was it. Uh, do, do you need a ride home or anything? Nicely screwed, Player 3. This is your cash now. Na, 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 na. I call this one... Our digital friendship. Uh, maybe I'll take a quick bathroom break. Binge Pipe recommends. Because you're a total horse person who hates horse movies where the main horse dies, we think you'll love War Horse, Lean on Pete, Black Beauty, or Farlap. Hope you like what you picked. Spoiler alert! Albert and Joey ride off into the sunset at the end of this movie. A total horse person. That's a centaur, right? Here's one for you. Victoria's smelly secret. What complaints might you have about some bras bought at a brasserie? I like the support, but they smell like burnt metal. Really cute designs, but they smell like a morgue. Very sexy, but they smell like circus animals. Or good fit, but they smell like beer and cheese. Who picked what? A brasserie is a casual French restaurant that serves beer and simple foods. And a bra that smells like beer and cheese is 100% what I'm into. You made it to the attack. When you see an answer that matches the category, tap it on your device. The faster you pick a right answer, the more cash you make. And more than one answer can be right. But each time you're wrong, I'm taking some cash away. And don't forget... We made everything for you! It's gotta be a match that fits this clue. A walk in the parks. Enjoy a nice walk through these park-themed prompts.
Blues wins! Congratulations, Player One. You won. Bask in this. Bask in this. Basilisk. Basket. Wait, what was I saying? You don't know Jack! By studying the flight patterns and the feeding habits of the swans, I can just barely justify my degree. Coach, please, don't put me in. I got a really good thing going here, just sitting on the bench. I do not want to ruin that with actually playing. Please. This is a very interesting wine, because if you look at the label, you can see the cause and date of your death. If you don't love me. Binge Pipe is still contractually bound to bring you You Don't Know Jack. Binge Pipe, here's where a joke goes. Hello, I'm Cookie Masterson, and I'm not here to replace your dad. I'm just here to read some trivia questions. Okay, buddy? Looks like a good group. Be careful not to have too much fun, or you might coalesce into a makeshift family that's really there for each other in times of trouble. Okay, no turning back. Time for question one. To get things started, all roads lead to Mars. Which Bruno Mars song title seems most fitting for the Roman god Mars? The Lazy Song, 24K Magic, It Will Rain, or Grenade? What'd you guys pick? I hope this doesn't put you in an uptown funk. <laughs> Mars was the Roman god of war, so he would probably be into a song about someone jumping on a grenade. Of course, the Greek god of war is Arizona Grande. Wow, that joke could have been its own question. Oh well. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Feast your eyes upon this. Less swole, more small. Look, I'm not 100% up on all my internet lingo, but according to my seven-year-old niece, a small bean is a little adorable thing. Which of these small beans is totally small, but not a bean at all? A soybean taking a nap, a fava bean asking for a hug, a coffee bean wearing mittens, or a kidney bean learning to use Tumblr. Okay, what'd you pick? Oh, my small child. Aww. <laughs> Want to see the right answer? Smallness aside, coffee beans are not beans. They're seeds. <laughs> also, coffee is not adorable. It's deadly serious, and I really need one right now. Anybody? Why do we do it with three? How about this one? Basic witches. And things are about to get fierce because it's time for a dis or dat. I'm going to read off seven names, and for each one, I want you to tell me if it's a character from the cartoon Adventure Time or a winner of RuPaul's Drag Race. Think fast. You'll only get a few seconds to pick between Adventure Time or Drag Race. And you're all doing this together, so focus up. Ready? Let's go. Ice Queen. Sasha 
worship the Lord. Cinnamon bun. Most of you haven't angered me, but you geniuses, you couldn't have done much worse. The binge pipe algorithm has detected hurt feelings. Oh, this ought to be good. Your lackluster score has earned you a screw. Remember, screwing during a question makes life tougher for the other players. We like to give you things, as long as they're not tangible. And now, ain't no party like a political party because a political party is carefully mediated. In high school, I did some embarrassing things at my model UN club, but only one of these stories about my interactions with Icelandic leadership is accurate. I tripped over the president and fell on the king. The prime minister and the queen stole my lunch. The president told the prime minister I like, liked her, or the czar was cool, but the archbishop gave me a wedgie. So who got it? In Iceland, the president is the head of state, but the prime minister leads the government. Thus, I was booted out of the model UN and thrown into the replica Hague. Coming up, Yacht Rock is timeless. If you like piña coladas, prove it. What kind of liquor are you going to need? Tequila, rum, gin, or absinthe? Oh, this will be good. <laughs> Player four has screwed you all. Let's see how you do without vowels. So what'd you pick? I hope it's not your birthday. According to the International Bartenders Association, a pina colada consists of pineapple juice, coconut juice, and white rum. That screw is a good move, player four. Spend this wisely. That's it for round one. Numbers don't lie. Let's take a look. Currently, player four is in the lead. Speaking of the exact opposite of that, these players are highly valued, but their scores are not. The data we have acquired demonstrates a need for more screws. And remember, round two screws screw even harder. And you'll net more cash for each player that answers wrong. So don't be afraid to use them. The rest of you better answer quick or you'll end up screwed. Oh, and did I mention all the money's doubled in round two? Really good stuff. <laughs> Six trombones is not a parade. Next up, sparkling urine. About how many 12-ounce cans of LaCroix could my bladder hold at once? 1.7 cans of pumple mousse, 4 cans of cran raspberry, 5.5 cans of muir pepino, or 8.2 cans of pure? Let's see how that shook out. Oh, hindsight. <laughs> I hate to lead you on. None of you got it. The capacity of an adult bladder is about 600 milliliters, or 20.2 ounces, or 1.7 cans of delicious, delicious LaCroix. That explains why I'm peeing 47 times a day. Hey, question. We'd like to offer you a chance to gain some content while also losing some other content. Would you like a question where everything is spelled correctly or a question where everything is spelled incorrectly? Use your device to select your preference.
was a waste of time. We'll pick one ourselves and ignore this chilling failure of the democratic process. Mes collègues sont des crétins. Sept. Next, a question where everything is spelled incorrectly. In which movie does everything get destroyed at the end? The Road, Dr. Strangelove, I Am Legend, or One Direction, This Is Us? Brace yourself. Layer 3, just let loose a screw. Hope you're a fast typer. And how do we do? Bit of bad news for you. <laughs> the correct answer is... In the final scene of this Stanley Kubrick film, the Earth gets bombed to smithereens. <laughs> And don't even ask me to spell smithereens. Nicely done with that screw, Player 3. Have some cash. T'was then I learned to heed the winds of it. <laughs> Try this on for size. Who, what, why, and warehouse? If men's warehouse wanted to start marketing their suits towards her suit men, what would you hear at the end of their commercials? It'll distract from your oversized facial features, I guarantee it. It'll cover your excessive body hair, I guarantee it. It'll fit over your giant gut, I guarantee it. Or it'll complement your pale skin, I guarantee it. So what'd you pick? Her suit is just another word for hairy. They would be marketing to hairy men. Coming up next, Octopus Coffee, Queen Elizabeth or Frankenstein? Octopus Coffee, Queen Elizabeth or Frankenstein? It's monster. First discovered in Switzerland. Octopus coffee, Queen Elizabeth or Frankenstein? Okay, what'd you pick? Good effort. Good effort. Author Mary Shelley first conceived the idea for Frankenstein while staying in Geneva, Switzerland with her husband. Switzerland, come for the chocolate and the cheese, stay for the tortured monsters. How about this one? The dead language of love. How would you sext if your keyboard only had letters from the Latin alphabet? You up, you up, you up, or you up? Here it comes. Player six just let loose a screw. Oh, don't crane your neck. Hope you like what you picked. The Latin alphabet did not have the letter U. Instead, it used the letter V to represent it. There is no U in team, or in the Latin alphabet, or in this relationship. Nicely done with that screw, Player Six. Here's your extra cash. It's time for the attack. When you see an answer that matches the category, tap it on your device. The faster you pick a right answer, the more cash you make. And more than one answer can be right. But each time you're wrong, I'm taking some cash away. And be careful. We may It's gotta be a match that fits this clue. I'm with the band. Hope you know your band lineups. Rock on.
job player three i'm happy for you truly and that's coming from a man who chose not to feel things anymore just don't forget this you don't know jack what is bitcoin a modern system for an ever-changing world an unprecedented level of sophistication. A road you follow just to see where... Are you tired of streaming services that are actually real and provide real services and aren't just a satirical rapper for the latest iteration of a video game franchise? Well, then Binge Pipe is for you. to become a professional live streamer? It's never been easier thanks to the Binge Pipe Streamer Program. Just listen to these satisfied streamers. I couldn't believe how easy it was to stream with Binge Pipe. It was like super easy to get started. There was almost no setup. There was literally no setup. No complicated sign-up process. You just click a button and stream. Sometimes I was streaming without even clicking the button. I'm not totally sure what that button does, actually. I started out just streaming games, but now I can't stop streaming. Seriously? I can't stop streaming. How do I turn this off? I think I'm streaming right now. The eye of Binge Pipe is unblinking. I unplugged my webcam, but the light's still on. I put it in a drawer, but it's still... Binge Pipe, much to the chagrin of its board of directors, presents You Don't Know Jack. Binge Pipe, if you're listening to this, it's already too late. Hey, I'm Cookie. I ask the questions, you press the buttons. While we wait for the others to get here, I've been working on this monologue where I'm a sea captain who... Oh, oh, you're all here? Uh, never mind. Let's forge ahead. Time for question one. First on the docket, need four more subscribers to fund Sistine Chapel. If Michelangelo had a Patreon page, which user would be subscribed? Pope John 007, Leonardo da Vinci is the bestie, Medici family official, or the real Vespucci? So who got it? No, not this one. 
The Medici family ruled Florence and were some of Michelangelo's biggest patrons. Patreon makes it so simple to support the artists I love. Like, not the artists I actually love, but like my friend from college who started a music blog I never read. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! It's time for Animal Name plus Animal Name equals Animal Name. Which of these animals did I just make up? Turtle dove, bumblebee bat, kangaroo rat, or elephant hog? Let's see who got it. Kangaroo rats, bumblebee bats, and turtle doves are all real animals. An elephant hog is not. If an elephant hog was real, I'd like to think it would be an elephant the size of a pig, and it would live in my house, and you would wear little clogs, and I would love you so much. Oh, I know you don't exist, but I will always love you, little elephant hog. Why don't we do it with three? Here's one for you. Ostentatious. And mind your manners, because it's a dis or dat. I'm going to list off names of seven women, and for each one, you tell me if it's a character from a Jane Austen novel or a character from an Austen Powers movie. Answer quick. You'll only have a few seconds to choose between Jane Austen or Austen Powers. And you're all doing this together, so look alive. All set? Here we go. Prowl for pissing up. Kensington Caroline Bingley Robin Swallows Not a lot of rock stars, but uh, decent rhythm section. But you guys, uh, tough one. You failed to live up to my already very low expectations. Binge Pipe Customer Retention Protocol has been activated. Sounds like it's screw time. That is the truth, Cookie. Screwing during a question makes life a little tougher for all the other players in a variety of enjoyable ways. And you'll receive a monetary bonus for anyone who answers incorrectly. Mm-hmm. I couldn't have said it better myself, apparently. In retrospect, we should have had you sign a waiver before handing over sharp objects. Take a good look at the Crate Depression. What would you find in a loot crate box that was curated by archaeologist Howard Carter? King Tut beef jerky, a Rosetta Stone iPad cover, Dead Sea Scrolls underwear, or a Marie Antoinette bobblehead? Let's see how that shook out. <laughs> I have a pretty sophisticated explanation about why this answer is so intellectually amusing. But instead... You know what? Nobody got it. Let's just cut to the chase. Howard Carter was the archaeologist who discovered King Tut's tomb in 1922. So be warned that that beef jerky is probably cursed. I mean, even more than the usual for beef jerky.
up next. Is there a Mrs. Worldwide? If the rapper Pitbull wanted to honor the origins of the Pitbull, what sexy club scene should he show in his next music video? A Rottweiler grinding on a pug, a Bulldog grinding on a terrier, a Doberman grinding on a Dachshund, or a Boxer grinding on a Shih Tzu? Okay, let's take a look. Pit bulls were bred by mating a bulldog and a terrier. Thankfully, we've made it through the only dog sex question in the game. Actually, I can't promise that. Round one is dead to me. Clearly, this isn't a popularity contest because here's the scoreboard. Currently, player three is in the lead. On the other hand, these players could use a little help, and there's no shame in that. Your performance has triggered the need for more screws. And keep in mind, round two screws have crazier effects. Plus, they earn you a bigger bonus for each player that gets the question wrong. So don't be shy about using them. The rest of you better answer fast before you get screwed. Oh, and uh, remember, questions are worth twice as much in round two. It's like the first round didn't even matter. <laughs> Six trombones is not a Oh, here's a good one. Answer the Dern question. Which Jurassic Park sequel does Laura Dern appear in? The Lost World, Jurassic Park 3, Jurassic World, or Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom? Layer 5 has unleashed the screw. You don't mind reading the fine print, right? Okay, who chose what? This might be discouraging. <laughs> Jurassic Park 3 is the only movie in the franchise that welcomes back Dr. Ellie Sattler, a.k.a. Laura Dern, a.k.a. the future Mrs. Masterson. Yeah, Oprah says you have to put things like this out into the universe. Hey, good work with that screw player five. I believe this belongs to you. My colleagues the crétin, sit. Here we have the dessert that dare not speak its name. It's true that we can't have our cake and eat it too, but Let's say you wanted to eat your cake, then have it, uh, later. You have your reasons, okay? I'm, I'm no one to judge. In progression, how will your cake change its name before you can, <clears throat> have it back? Cake bolus kime poo, cake trokey bo- Look sharp. My friends, player two has unleashed the screw. Your answers are on the go. Who picked what? Okay, that's wrong, but I'm so glad you picked this one. Glomblum is a word I made up, and I want people to start using it. It, it can mean anything. I don't care. Glomblum. Make it viral. <laughs> Why don't I save you all the embarrassment? After food is chewed, it's known as bolus. Then in the stomach, it becomes chyme before legally changing its name to poo. And the best part is, it's all yours. You can have it. Nice screwing, player two. Here's that cash. Twas then I learned to heed the winds of it. This one's known as marketing to attractive wildlife. And oh yeah, French Cutlets Prime Tour. It's time for a player is non Get those typing fingers ready, because the longer you take, the less money you make. Okay, here it comes. Look at this gibberish phrase and tell me what popular phrase it rhymes with. Um, hot deer do break trends. And don't worry about that punctuation. You hear this on reality TV shows. from 
a villain. This is not a place I arrived at to form new fondness for others. Let's see how you did. Player one. I don't know what this is, but it's not the right answer. You're gonna kick yourself. Let's get on with it, shall we? Here's one I like to call that Dern cat. Wow, I can't stop thinking about Laura Dern. I mean, she's the real deal, right? So, if Laura Dern and I were in the same vinyasa yoga class, I mean, could you even imagine? And we both arched our backs into cat pose, but then dropped our bellies and lifted our heads into Bidalasana, what's a cool thing I could say to Laura Dern? How's it going? What up, dog? Camel here often? Or, thanks for being you. Well, what do you know? <laughs> Player one just let loose a screw. Time to find out what you signed up for. I love this part. You won't like this, unless you're into failure. <laughs> Bitalasana is cow pose in vinyasa yoga and is commonly paired with cat pose. And then Laura and I would laugh and laugh and... You know what? Never mind. That screw is a good move, player one. Enjoy your cash. There is no hiding from... The young and the vestless. If millennials were blamed for the demise of trebuchets, what headline would you see? Millennials are killing the girdle industry? Millennials are... Well, well. <laughs> Player 7 unleashed that screw. This is going to be hashtag fun. What'd you guys pick? Yep, the trebuchet is not a type of horse carriage. Sorry, not sure why I said yep at the beginning of that. Used in medieval times, the trebuchet or trebuchet was a weapon used to hurl huge boulders. They were very popular with baby boomers. Very nice screw job, player seven. This is your cash now. Welcome to the attack. When you see an answer that matches the category, tap it on your device. The faster you pick a right answer, the more cash you make. And more than one answer can be right. But each time you're wrong, I'm taking some cash away. And don't forget... We may it's gotta be a match that fits this clue. Don't hate the game, hate the players. We'll give you the game. You tell us who plays it. Good luck.
Player two's got it! Excellent job, Player Two. You won by so much, it hurts. Uh, wait, no, that was definitely my appendix rupturing. I gotta go to the hospital. You don't know Jack! I've made a lot of money in my life. And I've made it all in the last 24 hours. I can show you how. He's a cop that doesn't play by the rules. She's also a cop that doesn't play by the rules. You know, they might not be cops. If you love NCIS Los Angeles, you'll love the three-episode French series the show is based on. La neige est sur le sol. La vie est triste. Oh, que de souvenir. Oh, que de souvenir. Only on Bench Pipe. I've just fallen down the stairs, but I feel great. Interactive menu screen. Pipe loves our users so Here at Binge Pipe, name recognition is priority Binge Pipe. So Binge Pipe a Binge Pipe and remember that Binge Pipe always Binge Pipes well into the Binge Pipe of Binge Pipe. a great time on our day tonight. You want to come inside and watch something? Uh, I know what that means. I've got Binge Pipe. The only streaming service better than casual sex? The very same. Going outdoors has become obsolete thanks to these Binge Pipe programs. You've heard of a tables, ladders, and chairs match, but this week on Wrestling Is Everywhere, we are taking the competition to a new level by having it in the middle of a fully operational high-end furniture and home decor store. I'm going to rip you apart, sectional by sectional, armoire to footstool because you are a sham and matching duvet set. You're going to seasonal table runner for your life until you throw in your tea towel. You're about to hit the grounds, cause here comes the French press. Hi, I'm looking for wall sconces. No, 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 no. <laughs> this week on Wrestling Is Everywhere. Hey man, you succulent! What is Bitcoin? A modern system for an ever-changing world. 
an unprecedented level of sophistication. A road you follow just to see where it goes. It's an indulgent gift you give yourself and then return. It's a letter from an old friend. A knock on the door late at night. Who could survive all this rain? It's a song you hum to yourself while the bank teller fills the bag. It's a deer, sleek and innocent and made of lightning. That letter from the old friend. This isn't their handwriting. It's hieroglyphics. The letter bursts into flame and you faint. You wake up in a rainy alley in London and hear a voice whisper, the songbird is deadlier than the jackal in the right climate. You look behind you, but there's only an old woman embroidering. You run and run and barely make it on the last train out of the city. You arrive at a ship and sneak aboard. You sleep on coils of rope. The captain discovers you and says, we're taking you to meet someone you wronged many years ago. But when the ship docks, you're left standing in front of your own door. This is Bitcoin. Binge Pipe would like to express its deep regret for investing in You Don't Know Jack. Binge Pipe. Shh, shh, shh. Just watch. I'm Cookie, and this is You Don't Know Jack, the game where there are no losers. Unless you get a bunch of questions wrong. Wow, six players is the perfect number for... Oh, eight players. Well, that's... That's, that's good, too. Not as good as sex, but... And we're off. Time for question one. To get things rolling? What a blast hole. What would it sound like if dynamite got put on blast? Everyone knows you're just a stick of black powder. Ha, you're just some weak old TNT. I heard you were actually ammonium nitrate. Or man, you're nothing but nitroglycerin and stabilizers. Let's see who got it. Dynamite is nitroglycerin with inert stabilizers. Hard to come back from a sick burn like that. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Behold, what side of the conflict was Spider-Man on? Based on the length of the conflict, which of these wars was closest to being an infinity war? The Hundred Years' War, the Reconquista, the Korean Conflict, or American Indian War? Hope you like what you picked. Now that just lasted a short 300 some odd years. Hmm, <laughs> topical, but no. Okay, <laughs> nobody guessed it. Let's skip ahead. The Reconquista lasted from the early 8th century to 1492, over 700 years. <laughs> Although compared to an infinity, 700 is a snap. Why do we do it with three? Let's try a delicious bowl of fruit troops and a heaping helping of it's a dis or dat. I'm going to list off seven names and for each one you tell me if it's a character from Joseph Heller's novel Catch-22 or a discontinued breakfast cereal from General Mills. Don't think too hard. I'm only giving you a few seconds to decide between from Catch-22 or a discontinued General Mills cereal. And you're all doing this together, so look alive. Here it comes. Applebee. Colonel Corn. 
Bradbury. The majority of you deserve my praise, but player eight, you just plain sucked at that dis or dat. Binge pipe customer retention protocol has been activated. Sounds like it's screw time. That is the truth, Cookie. Using the screw makes it harder for all the other players to answer in a variety of pleasurable ways. And you'll receive a bonus for each player who chooses incorrectly. Mm-hmm. I couldn't have said it better myself, apparently. We like to give you things, as long as they're not tangible. You're my question for forevermore. I love you, my question for. Take a good look at Haters Gonna Hate. Suppose fans of Bill Hader call themselves haters and only like movies with Bill Hader in them. In that case, which film are haters going to hate? Trainwreck, This is the End, Adventureland, or... So watch out. Player 8 just let loose a screw. Binge Pipe doesn't like it when I shout at you, but they're fine with this. How do we do? Uh, this answer is a train wreck. <laughs> this answer is super bad. <laughs> Bill Hader was in train wreck Adventureland and super bad, but he was not in This Is the End, so his haters would hate it. <laughs> but fans of Danny McBride, who I can only assume call themselves McBridesmaids, probably loved it. Way to screw player eight. Spend this wisely. <laughs> Coming up next, love this dumb song or Elsa. Suppose that at a production of Frozen on Broadway, fans could show their love during the curtain call by throwing hard to freeze substances on stage. Which would show the most love? Throwing water at Elsa, throwing blood at Elsa, throwing nitrogen at Elsa, or throwing helium at Elsa? Okay, let's take a look. Nitrogen is tough, but not the toughest. Sorry to melt your chances, Olaf. <laughs> Just because you want to throw blood at Elsa doesn't make this the correct answer. <laughs> With a freezing point of minus 272 degrees Celsius, Elsa has her work cut out for her. I'm sure she can handle it. Hell, she made a dress out of ice. Although on Broadway, I'm told it's more of a fun pantsuit. Way more practical for getting around your ice castle. Say goodbye to round one. Let's see those scores. Currently, player eight is in the lead. Player three, on the other hand, maybe you should try winning. We have another screw to help our targeted numbers. Round two screws have crazier effects. Plus, they earn you a bigger bonus for each player that gets the question wrong. So do not be afraid to use that thing. The rest of you better answer fast before you get screwed. Oh, and by the way, all the cash in round two is doubled. In case you care about things like that. Now that's good game design. <laughs> This one's called Netflix and Deep Freeze. Which of these examples of Netflix and chill is going down where the chilliest temperature on Earth was recorded? Hipsters hugging to Bright in Spokane, Washington. Teens watching The Crown in Oymyakon, Siberia. Scientists binging altered carbon at the Vostok station. Or vegans spooning with food ink on at the base of Mount Fuji. Uh-oh. Player three just let loose a screw. Embrace the change or don't. So 
So who got it? Interesting choice. <laughs> For what it's worth. In 1983, the Russian research station in Antarctica recorded a temperature of minus 128.6 degrees. <laughs> Nothing quite like cuddling around streaming content to keep you warm. Nicely done with that screw player 3. Here's your extra cash. Oh, and it looks like we've got some name changes. I'd call that an improvement. And now, it's all in your headlines. Which of these newspapers is actually fake news? The Plain Dealer, The Mercury News, The Star Ledger, or The Daily Bugle? Who picked what? The Star Ledger is New Jersey's paper. And shockingly, New Jersey is a real place. <laughs> this answer is in retrograde. <laughs> That's just plain wrong. <laughs> yep, while the other three are among the top 25 U.S. newspapers in circulation, the Daily Bugle is fictional. Peter Parker worked for it in the Marvel Universe. And personally, I don't care if the news is real or fake, as long as it can totally ruin my day. Hey, question. We'd like to initiate a moment of playful interactivity. Would you like a question with nuts? Or a question without nuts? Choose on your devices now. the votes you have engaged with the process twas then i learned to heed the winds of it here's one i like to call a question with nuts in which classic novel does the main character lose his candy bar but not his peanuts the sound and the fury the sun also rises the catcher in the rye or the house on poo corner So what'd you pick? I mean, maybe if it wasn't a euphemism, but it's totally a euphemism. <laughs> I hate to lead you on. None of you got it. In the classic Ernest Hemingway novel, protagonist Jack Barnes loses his penis, but not his testicles in World War I. <laughs> and I now no longer feel bad that my new car only cost me an arm and a leg. How about this one? Type equals squiggly bracket female, comma, author, squiggly bracket. Except all cookies don't clear your cash. It's time for data mining. Wow, BenchPipe sure has a lot of user data, huh? Some people would say too much. Those people are wrong. <coughs> Governess wanted. Fire insurance policies. What's in the attic search denied? You must never go into the attic. Whose search history have we uncovered? Agatha Christie, Virginia Woolf, Toni Morrison, or Charlotte Bronte? Okay, who chose what? You will recover from this. Let's save ourselves some time. Charlotte Bronte wrote Jane Eyre, a classic novel that features a governess, a house fire, and a secret locked up in the attic. <laughs> Binge Pipe does not forbid you to go looking for our secrets because we know there's no way you'd ever find them. 
Sabes que es lindo y es perritos. Try this on for size. Remember Cheers? If after taking a sociology class, Diane convinced the patrons of Cheers to start calling Norm one of the four types of cultural norms, what would they not shout as he walked through the door? Mores, folkways, ethics, or taboos? What'd you guys pick? So winging and the miss. Maury's folkways, taboos, and laws are four cultural norms. Ethics can only help shape norms. Although drinking 12 beers a night also has an effect on the shape of norms. Time for the attack. When you see an answer that matches the category, tap it on your device. The faster you pick a right answer, the more cash you make. And more than one answer can be right. But each time you're wrong, I'm taking some cash away. And be careful. It's gotta be a match that fits this clue. Party people, check out these famous parties and tell us who is in attendance. Good luck. Commence loud and slowly intensifying slow clap. Are you doing it? This is great, right? Yeah. You don't know Jack! Nine one one. what's your emergency? I think my husband's dead. He's been shot. Okay, where are you? Four, four, 1442 Willow Street. It's going to be a few minutes before an ambulance team gets there. I'm going to give you instructions in the meantime, okay? Okay. All right. The first thing I need you to do 
is record the murder scene. Get a few different angles and maybe add a slow pan to a wall of family portraits. Oh yeah, that'd be really nice. What? Ma'am, please stay calm. We need you to film a few things for the potential true crime doc about your husband. True crime doc? What are you talking about? Ma'am, I need you to calm down and listen. It's crucial that we get some B-roll right now or, you know, production is gonna drag on for this project. I am not filming that! Well, then can you at least get some footage of a neighbor acting weird or saying something cryptic or um, could you get some footage of maybe a crow flying from a telephone wire landing on a fence? Hey kids, do you like sharing? Yeah! Do you like oversharing at a work event causing a cataclysmic rift between you and your peers that you can never erase? This week on Captain Fun Time's World of Hard Adult Lessons. <laughs> Shapiro here, and up next on Truth Talk 237, what are my neighbors up to? It sure seems like they're up to something. Well, I've got their mail and their garbage, and we're going to get to the bottom of this. Truth Talk 237. Truth Talk. Do just cleaning out my fingernails. Badu. Introducing America's Secret Singers. Sandwich. I got a pastrami sandwich. A singing competition show composed entirely of videos of people who didn't know their webcams were on. Where's the stamps? But um bum bum my bills are overdue. The singer with the most online votes will receive ten thousand dollars and they'll never know why. My arms are so hairy. My arms are so hairy. My arms are so hairy, but my legs are smooth. <laughs> I'm Kyle. And I'm Julie. We're best friends. And siblings. Or maybe we're dating. It's It's super super ambiguous. ambiguous. Right when you think we're for sure brother and sister. We kiss. But then we act so weird about it. We just gotta be siblings. Right? Super ambiguous. Coming Coming this this fall. fall. This is You Don't Know Jack Oldies Radio, and I'm your host, Schmitty. Get ready for your favorite You Don't Know Jack commercials from yesteryear. Put on your sunglasses because the past is so bright, you got to wear shades to get that reference. All right, let's listen. Hey, kid, do you like cupcakes? Yeah. And you like carp, right? Uh, not really. Then pop open a pack of new grossest carp cakes. Moist, chocolatey cupcakes filled with a creamy whipped carp center. Try one. No thanks. Go on, they're delicious. Well, okay. Whoa, tastes like carp. Chocolatey carp. Watch out for the bones. Now go tell your mom that she can find carp cakes at the grocer's seafood counter. Hey, mom. Fish isn't just for dinner anymore, it's for dessert. Also look for chub cakes, cod cakes, and the all new cup hake. Grossest carp cakes. The cake from the lake. 
Hey, it's me. I just wanted to say hello. Had Not another boring voicemail message. Bye. Hold the phone. Before you delete that unwanted voicemail, think about those unfortunate people who never get any calls. Don't you think they'd want the message, even if you don't? Gee, I guess so. Then press 8 to donate. When you get a message you don't want, press 8. Your message will be forwarded to the mailbox of a fiber optic lonely heart. Uh, hey, this is Bill. I got your spreadsheet off the webpage, but I had some questions about the R&D headings. Uh, give me a call. Bill, I don't know what that meant, but you just made my day. They may not understand the random messages they get, but they'll sure feel more connected. And isn't that what technology is all about? You no, know, you're right. I'm going to press 8 to donate. Hey, it's me. I just wanted to say hello. Hadn't talked to you in a while. Give me a call sometime. Bye. I love you, random voice. Press 8 to donate. Go ahead and touch someone with other people's fingers. Come on down to Buster's Bait Shop where your grub and crawlers one-stop bumpers, hooks and poles and nets and line. So if your son or pappy is wishing to do some bass or crappy fishing, come to Buster's and have a real good time. Buster's Bait Shop. Master baiters since 1923. Thanks for joining me for another cruise down memory lane on You Don't Know Jack Oldies Radio. This is Schmitty saying, see you last time. <laughs> uh. You Don't Know Jack Oldies Radio. <laughs> Karen, you've been through so much. Yes, I have. Personal tragedy after personal tragedy, followed by a series of small instances that when compiled, add up to more personal tragedy. It's truly been awful. That's why your family nominated you, Karen, for this unique opportunity. Are you ready? I think so. Karen, turn around, face the mirror, and take a look at your new hat. I tell you what, though, man, life is different now. Life is different, especially kids. All you hear now is, can I have screen time? Can I have screen time? My nephew kept asking me that question, and I said, sure. And then I plopped him in front of my screen door. I said, that was my screen time as a kid. I have an irrational fear of change. This is your old friend Schmitty, host of Bint Pipe's new You Don't Know Jack Oldies Radio. I'll be playing your favorite You Don't Know Jack commercials from the 90s, 2000s, and the early 10s. So buckle up, because I'm firing up the Wayjack machine. Oh, God, I hate my life. How many times has this happened to you? Daddy, what's the difference between absolute and relative surplus value according to Marx? Uh, go play with this ball, honey. Middle class buffoon. Well, it won't happen again. Look what I have for you, sugar. The illustrated Das Kapital. Thanks, Daddy. You're welcome, sweetie. The brightly colored pictures help me understand the general law of capitalist accumulation. Uh -huh. And the pop-up stick figures tell me all about heterogeneous and serial manufacture. Yep. There's even a scratch and sniff chapter about machinery and modern industry. That's right, honey. Daddy, Daddy, you're the greatest. Now, can you tell me how the expression of female sexuality can challenge the patriarchal order? <laughs> I love you, pumpkin. The Illustrated Das Kapital. Also available, the Gross Anatomy Book of Coyote Dolls and the Kama Sutra playset. Your temper is just like your mother. My temp... What? My... Oh. How do you know I... my... You don't know anything about my mother. No, I didn't. Did no. you know? I... Well... What are you trying to say? Okay. I knew your mother. What? How did you know my mother? Knew your mother. What are you saying? In France. I don't know. I had too much to drink. And what are you trying? No, I loved her for many hours. L oh. And she had you Old out man. of the wedlock. Old man. I'm, are you trying to I, tell me that... Schmitty. You're trying to tell me that you are my... My... Say it! Daddy? 
liquor. Don't drink that. Why? Mine. Oh. This message brought to you by the United States Department of Condescending Paternalism. This is Schmitty, and you've been listening to You Don't Know Jack Oldies Radio. You Don't Know Jack Oldies Radio. Enjoy this exclusive behind the scenes content from You Don't Know Jack. Hey, it's Brittany, one of the writers for You Don't Know Jack. There are a lot of questions that don't make it into the game for a variety of reasons. For example, I wanted to write a dis or dat that was, is it a schoolhouse rock song about numbers? Or is it a porno? Because you got the four-legged zoo, naughty number nine, ready or not, here I come. And those are just the schoolhouse rock ones. I didn't write it because I got too scared to search for porn. Apparently typing only porn titles, please don't don't show me porn in the search engine doesn't work. It still shows you a lot of porn. Thank you for joining us for this binge pipe bonus content. Listening to You Don't Know Jack Oldies Radio. I'm Schmitty, and I'll be your guide as we cruise down memory lane to play some of the classic Jack commercials from yesteryear. Hey, do you remember the 90s? You don't? Well, that's going to be a problem. Listen to these classic commercials anyway. Uber it's delicious. Uber Nostrum tastes just like candy. I mean, it's tasty. I enjoy the freedom of Uber Nostrum. It takes the pain away. Uber Nostrum. Uber Nostrum makes me feel fresh. Uber Nostrum improved my golf game. I made $20,000. I never knew love, and, and then I tried Uber Nostrum. Uber Nostrum. I haven't cried in weeks, I think. You should take Uber Nostrum, just in case. There's no downside. It looks great. I look great. I feel great now. I feel good. Good. Goodness. Savory goodness. Uber Nostrum. This is going to sound strange, but I feel like a more like a woman. I feel more like a woman. Uber Nostrum changes lives. Thank you, Uber Nostrum. Thank God for Uber Nostrum. Nostrum. Du musst mehr gut gefühlen mit Uber Nostrum. Nostrum. Are you an audio engineer, animator, or just a sound effects enthusiast who wishes they had more boner sound effects in their collection? Well, you're in luck with the new Thousand Sounds Boner Collection. We've got the chubby, the little prick, the chode, the crazy ejaculator, the boner entering bullet time, the boner that takes a few seconds to struggle out of pants, the my first boner, the musical boner, the just can't get it started boner, the whipped out in public, the Rube Goldberg, the fish boner, the robot boner, the human boner that for some reason sounds like a bunch of kittens boner, and the Kevin. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Order the Boner Collection today and we'll throw in the giant cartoon booby collection for free. In the next episode of the Radio Drama Archive, we pull out the 1921 gem, The Midnight Run, starring Ernest Wilmore and Gladys Kemp, with sound effects from Foley artist Al Peppers. Here's a fun fact. Due to several financial constraints, Al had no props for this production. Here's a snippet. Bang, 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 kablooey! Mind if I barge in? Say, sweetheart, you look tied up. If you're not too busy, let me help you with that. Oh, Mickey, you've come for me! Ch -ch 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 -ch. Sound of chains rustling. Ch -ch 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 -ch. The sound of chains. Hands off the girl, Mickey! Ah! He's got a gun! Bam, 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 kerplunk! Sound of table falling over. Window breaking. Smash! Bam, 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 bam! That's next week on the Radio Drama Archive. That's it for this session of You Don't Know Jack Oldies Radio. I'm Schmitty, and I'll always be with you in your memories. Oh my God.
God, that's a terrifying thought. You don't know Jack Old is Radio. <laughs> Okay, welcome back to Talking Mystery Mountain. I'm joined as always by my panel. Guys, wow, how about that episode? After facing some criticism that the show has lost its way and that the writers created too big of a puzzle to solve, they respond in a big way. Just when you think this show is beyond repair, we're rewarded with that bombshell. I'm still in shock that Michael is a shape-shifting alien who can time travel. Yeah, that really tied up a lot of loose ends in a totally organic way. Looking at social media, the episode is getting a lot of positive feedback, but there are some detractors out there. Staceface17 says, this is how they kill off Jennifer? Are you kidding me? Hashtag lame plot device. Before we jump into this comment, I believe we have the clip she's... You've tried other menu screens. Now enjoy the best. Binge Pipes. 